call to order the City Council meeting for City of East Grand Forks for December 1st, 2020 is now 6 o'clock. Would the City Clerk please call roll? Mayor Steve Here. Council President Mark Here. Council Vice President Chad Grassel. Chad Here. Council Members Clarence Vedder. Here. Dale Helms. Here. Tim Rieko. Here. Tim Johnson. Here. Mark Present. Does Attorney McCorn please stand for Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval minutes for November 17th Council meeting and November 24th work session. Move. Move by Demers. Second. Second by Johnson. Any questions or discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Olstead? Yes. Grassle? Yes. Demers? Yes. Better? Yes. Helms? Yes. Motion is carried. Scheduled bid lighting is none. Scheduled public hearings. Public hearing for the consideration of a 5% increase to the tax levy. Is your motion to open public hearing? Moved. To Moved by Grassle. Second by Demers. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. The public hearing is now open. Ms. Anderson or Mr. Murphy, you have anything? Ms. Anderson, if you would like to just uh, go through what the levy is uh, as far as the amount and um, how that uh, affects the overall rate. Um, you want to do a brief little presentation about or just a brief discussion about how it affects the um, the individual households as far as the different rates that you look at. Yeah, with the five percent levy, it's it's not it's based on the whole pot of all the properties located in East Grand Forks. And then it's divided by the property and what the assessed value of your home is. And in the past years, we've taken four residential properties and compared what the levy would be um, with the increase and then what the actual has been throughout the years. We started in 2012. And with the 5% increase from 2020 to 2021, it ranges from 1.39 to about 3%, which is in the range of what we've talked about for inflation. Um, we did do a business and the business was a little higher than the 3%. So tonight we're looking just for um, feedback from the public if there's anybody that wants to talk about it. And then we will approve the levy, final levy and the budget on December 15th. And there will be discussion on it at the work session next Tuesday. Any questions? Anybody comments? from the public on? I don't see anybody. There's any no, other? I do not show anybody from the public as having logged in. Mr. Demers. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as we move towards the um, the budget and levy approvals um, and go into this next work session. I was just wondering if we could make sure that we have a, a summarized list of all the changes that from tw the 2020 to 2021 budget kind of laid out as for next week as well. Anybody else? And Oh, Go ahead, Carla. Sorry. I was just going to comment on that, that um, I, in the past we have given the percentage for personnel um, supplies at this time. There isn't much change. And we will also show you what we have changed since we put out the original budget. So what we took out to balance it to the level that the council is comfortable with. There's no other thing, <clears throat> excuse me, nobody else has any questions. So we'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Move close. Moved by Demers. Second. Second by Rhea Pell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. The public hearing is now closed. Move on to the consent agenda. Items under the consent agenda will be adopted with one motion. However, a council member may request individual items be pulled from the consent agenda for discussion and action if they choose. Any members like four through six pulled? Pull oh, five, please. Um, what was that? Pull five, please. Pull five. Second. Okay. <clears throat> Entertain a, mo a motion of four and six, then. Move four six. Your second. Second. Any questions or discussion? Roll call, please. 
Yes. Johnson? Yes. Olstead? Yes. Grassle? Yes. Mers? Yes. Better? Yes. Helms? Yes. Motion is carried. Number five, consider adoption resolution number 20-12-76 authorizing the City of East Grand Forks to enter into the law enforcement mutual aid agreement for mutual benefit of the public safety for the state of Minnesota and authorize the Chief of Police to execute the agreement and amendments as necessary. Oh. Moved by Grassle. Second. Second by Demers. Questions and discussion, Mr. Demers. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to speak to this, not in opposition, but more as a a note to thank the chief for um, putting in the effort to to put um, a policy together, an internal policy on how we we address these mutual aid uh, agreements. Um, I, like I said, I really appreciate the work that went into it. Um, I think it gets to some of the um, the issues that I had concerns about, and I appreciate that. And thank you. Like I have two questions about it. Number one, is that something that we need to authorize at the council level and then the other well i'll listen for the answer on that one first i, I guess i can answer that um yeah, if for an internal policy like that um you know necessarily we do not need to um, have the council approval uh for that um, we certainly will share it with the council and take any concerns or or um, questions into into account but um, for an internal policy like that that's typically something that could be developed by staff can it be changed? When I do have the, the policy finalized, which I don't think it'll take much more, but I typically do have uh, all of our directives reviewed by our, our administrative staff, uh, the lieutenant and the sergeants. And uh, once they've given me their recommendations on this and we have a final version, uh, I'll absolutely get a copy of that out to the council so you can all see that. I appreciate it. And so doing that, you can modify it at any time as well then? Or could yes but i have no intention to it's i just i have no problem with us uh, having this in place that as i mentioned to mr murphy earlier today i think having some checks and balances in place for situations like this is there's that's a positive not a negative so i have no problem with it okay and thank you and well i i guess you i didn't mean you personally i meant the the chief or any staff member yeah yep yeah i guess i'd say um it would be, it would be, um, I guess it wouldn't be really following um, administrative practice to change a policy like that. That would affect that overall um, response of the city without uh, notifying the council um, to say it can't be done. No, I guess you, I guess technically you could do it, but it would not be really, it would not be following um, administrative practices to do that. Okay. And second, so I think when it's the way the policy, the, we call them directors, but the way the, the policy reads, I would have to request approval for the emergency orders through either the mayor, the city administrator, or the city council president. And uh, if myself or a future chief were to remove that, essentially cutting those people out of the loop, I, I don't think that would bode well for that, that chief at that time. Right. I don't think that would be a wise decision. So. Well, I like I said, there being any issues. I do appreciate the work. Um, the only second question I had as I was looking through the um, the agreement, it talks about liability and workman's comp, but this is also a equipment mutual aid. What would happen if like one of our squads or something was requested and was damaged or you know something like that? Is that our insurance that will cover that or is that covered under the requesting agency's coverage? I don't recall anything specific detailing that in the mutual aid agreement. I would assume that it would be our insurance that would cover that. Is, have you had it in, in your experiences in the past, have you know, has that, has that come up that you might have a practice to, to notice on how, on how that was handled? Or is or has that not occurred where you've been? I'm not aware of it occurring, but it certainly could. We obviously saw a lot of uh, law enforcement vehicles damaged in, in the protests down in the Twin Cities, uh, so it's certainly a possibility. But I, I'm, I guess I'm not aware off the top of my head who I would contact. See there looks business. like someone that has maybe an answer to that, <laughs> Mr. Galstead. Um, if I may. Go ahead, Ron. Uh, the uh, other uh, joint power agreements that we've entered into specifically addresses that. And it specifically has the uh, the owning party 
is responsible for their own equipment. This one isn't, in fact, silent to that. So because it is silent, I would assume that our own insurance company would take care of it. And that's fine with our insurance, I would imagine. Um, well, I would, I would imagine it is because we're actually using it. Um, somebody else isn't using that equipment typically in it, but um, we could always run it by the League of Minnesota Cities. Um, I just don't see it as an issue. Um, okay. regarding the insurance company covering the loss on damage to our vehicles. Okay, I appreciate it. And like I said, it, I appreciate crossing the T's and dotting the I's on this, and I'm in support of it. Thank you. Anybody else have anything on that one? Thank you, Mayor. It's a good opportunity to say thanks again to you, Chief Headland, for allowing me to partner with your folks over there at the police department. Um, as we walked out the other day, Mr. Demers and I, he reiterated once again that, you know, I trust Chief Headland, I trust you, I trust the process, but I really do like the idea of kind of formalizing that oversight just a little bit between us. And I'll say again, at every turn where there's been a decision to make or a, any kind of judgment call, you've kept me informed with text, with phone call, with whatever it may be. And, and what a privilege to, to partner with you along with all of our department heads and to, to try to do whatever called upon to, to help in those departments. And so as we think of it, you know, as far as mutual aid, I don't think anybody ever really thinks they're gonna need it. I think if you asked Bemidji a year ago, they'd have said, we're never gonna need it. And yet the need can materialize pretty quickly. And so I like that we're involved with this. I like that we have these great connections around the state and even into Grand Forks for a lot of things. And um, let's hope we never need it, but the chance of us needing it is probably just about as great as anybody else. Thanks for doing it. Anybody else have anything? If not, roll call, please. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Holstead? Yes. Grassle? Yes. Demers? Yes. Better? Yes. Helms? Yes. Motion is carried. Acknowledge I've received of reports of officers, boards, and commissions for regular meeting minutes of Water, Light, Power, and Building Commission for November 4th, 2020. Communication, there's none. Old business, there's none. Move on to new business. Number eight, consider adoption resolution number 20-12-77. Authorize the City of East Grand Forks to enter in an agreement with the Commissioner of Transportation for the closure of 3rd Avenue Northwest railroad crossings and installation of new railroad flashing light signal system at the intersection of 2nd Avenue Northwest. Move by Clarence. But Mr. Riopel, seconds. So any questions or discussion? Mr. Murphy. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, really, there's the, the agenda item before you tonight, there's really two parts of it. The first one is the resolution um, for to agree to close um, Third Street Northwest um, uh, next to Sacred Heart Church. Um, that is required by the state of Minnesota, the Department of, of uh, Transportation, um, to move forward with the, uh, for them to fund the closure, uh, excuse me, the upgrades um, at second. And then the other item is what the, um, the Minnesota Department of Transportation would like us to, to know that we have a, at least a tentative agreement as far as, with the BNSF for the closure of that as far as the incentive um, payment um, in order to them for them to keep it on to the, the uh, funding cycle so um, if you if you'd like I can talk about what the um, the counter offer that we received from uh, BNSF and how that relates to this or if you would like to just take action on the resolution and then I can uh, address those uh, concerns um, I could do that as well. So whichever way you'd, you'd like to have it. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a refresher on the configuration of the quiet zone. This talks about updates to the 2nd Avenue Northwest um, crossing. Is there updates needed at the Central Avenue crossing as well? Uh, Steve, you want to address that one? No, the the signal system there is um, you know totally up to date, so there is no um, 
upgrades required there. Um, you know, we will be required, the city will be required to put in um, some medians, some pavement markings, some proper signage, you know, plus we were looking at um, at that crossing, having the, uh, the crossing surface on the west side extended about 16 feet. So we're able to put in a sidewalk on the west side of Central Avenue there. Um, so there is gonna be some cost with that, which David will go into, which is part of kind of that in, um, payment from Burlington Northern. But, but as far as the railroad equipment itself, um, there is no upgrades required at Central Avenue. So in the in the cost for the estimated cost for that um, is forty five thousand, uh, not including um, engineering and soft costs. The I'm just trying to think of so that crossing at Central will be it will remain. It's just a two way uh, crossing arm, right? One on each side, and then we're planning on putting like bollards or concrete mediums or jersey barriers or something in yeah, at the, the center line to to disallow people to cross over to the other lane correct that's correct mr Demersia. at this point we're planning to put in you know basically a concrete median on both sides of the track sir so will people coming from the south um, side of Central, Southish, I guess I'm calling it the South Side. Um, crossing over the tracks, will they be able to make a left turn? How quickly yes. will they be able to make a left turn in onto that that BNSF road that goes in between the school yes. and the tracks? Yeah, what I'd call on the north side of the tracks, sir, we're only going to have about a 30 foot median there. Okay. Oh, they'll easily be able to accommodate a left turn movement there. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. So basically, and then the the control structure at Central, or not Central, at Second Avenue, is that a four way, or will that require medians and Jersey barriers and those type of things as well? It'll still be, uh, you know, basically a two gate system at Second Avenue there. So we still will be required to put in concrete medians at that intersection or that crossing also. Okay. And then the only other question, I had talked to some of the folks at Sacred Heart, and I think I know the answer to this, but they were wondering about that section of street that is that I was referring to before that's between the school and the track and the ability for that to be turned into a one-way. But is that even, that it, I believe that that's on BNSF property. Is that considered a, a private road? Do we know? Or is that a city street? Well, I guess I don't know the answer to that. Is that you, Jason, Nancy, do any of you know what that's considered? I don't for sure, David, know if that's considered a city street. Um, I thought BNSF property goes all the way across that road. Um, there. I, I think it. I think it does, Mr. Demers. So somewhere along the lines, whether it's private or city, um, you know, someone got an easement or something to put that road in. So I guess my my question then I just want to be able to direct them to the right channel if they will if they're requesting to make that a one way should they be talking to the city or should they be talking to BNSF? Well, I guess as far as that, if if, if or, I mean, are we maintaining that road as far as following it, um, repairing it, those types of things? Because if, if we're if we're in in control of it that way, I would believe unless Ron has uh, any opinion otherwise, I believe then we would have the authority to regulate it as far as um, speed limits, um, you make it into one way, that type of thing. I believe that would then would be within our authority. Mr. President? Well said. Uh, I, would, I would concur with that. I guess I would have to look, but I, this is assuming that we have an easement over that area so that we can use it as a public street. And if we can use it as a public street, the city has the control over all public streets in the city of East Grand Forks. 
And then if there isn't something else, such as uh, uh, restrictions by MnDOT, uh, we should be able to direct the flow of traffic on that. Can, can staff look into those questions, yeah. please? Yeah. Um, Mr. President, this is Jason. Um, I'm just looking it up right now on the county website. And according to the county website, it is railroad BNSF owned uh, for not all of it, but most of that street along along the railroad track. So. Yeah, I mean, it's probably BNSF property, but we probably have an easement over it for allowing the, the, sure. the road. I'm assuming, sorry, Mr. President, I'm assuming that we probably got some easement paperwork somewhere that wasn't necessarily platted because the county right now only has platted property shown on their GIS and not um, dedicated easements. So it would require uh, Ron to maybe do a title search, just, or, you know, or a search over at the county just to verify if there's an easement recorded over there. Yep. Mr. Johnson. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I know the city is, uh, there's no name for that street. So that, we could maybe take care of that too. <laughs> you angling for the Tim Johnson street? <laughs> <laughs> no. Anybody else have any questions? Remind me what the total cost of this whole thing is gonna be. Oh, I guess, are you saying for the, the, the entire cost of the project or the, the city portion of the, of the cost? Well, the city cost and then from what we received from you the other day, it didn't sound too promising. Well, I guess what we were looking at is we were looking at the over, what the overall cost to the city would be for the, um, the city's portion of the, the construction at second, third and central. We lumped that all in together. So what we submitted to BNSF for the incentive for our counter offer to them was that then we wouldn't end up paying any uh, city out of pocket costs for the, the entire project. We, because we, you know, that was our question to see if they would go for that. They countered for with um, what they did add some city costs into it, but they did counter um, significant less than we did um so there's a couple things the really the main thing that they took out of the out of there was the um on third street um the pavement that is um that would need to be required uh, to be replaced in there the cement panels that are significantly deteriorated they felt were de deteriorated beyond normal use in normal life so that they looked at that as a city cost then to pay that so the overall project cost um, for getting it ready to be to meet the requirements for a quiet zone is one point one one million four hundred fifty six thousand um, of that the city portions for second street is roughly seventy five thousand third street is seventy seven thousand and uh, for central is 45,000 uh, plus engineering costs. They do not do, um, they, did, they did not put forward for the engineering costs. They, they don't pay for the engineering costs. So out of the one point, let's say $1.5 million project, the city would be responsible for $267,000. So which is roughly 19% of the overall project. Um, plus so another 250,000 in engineering costs or what? Uh, 70,000 in engineering costs. You didn't even shake your head, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> now that seventy thousand, that has some time in there for Ron too, so we're, we're good. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. When I say when I say seventy seventy thousand, that's that soft cost that includes engineering, administration, and legal. So yes, um, and that's in the two sixty seven already, right? That is correct. Yeah. So I guess with that being said, I mean, you know, this is kind of going to these, the second part of it, meaning the counter offer to BNSF. Um, at this point, we did meet um, as staff, and I am willing to make the recommendation that the city accept the counter offer of, uh, I believe it's $156,000 um, that BNSF has countered for that. Um, I still think overall it's, it's a pretty good deal 
uh, cost-wise for us to be able to get that quiet zone through the city of East Grand Forks. Mr. Demers. Thank you, Mr. President. Just wondering if this is approved, what um, what construction year is this scheduled? Would this be scheduled for? Steve, you can answer that. I think I think right now um, we're looking at probably 2022. I think is is probably the earliest. Um, with David getting the resolution, everything to MnDOT, um, I think they're trying to get it on the fiscal year 2022 uh, funding cycle for the you know the railroad upgrades. So, so again, I think we're looking at right now probably construction season of 2022. Anybody else have anything at this time? See none. So, go ahead. One thing I was just just going to note, and I don't know if it's that big a deal. I'll just look, and the total incentive payment is one hundred and fifty six thousand two hundred and three dollars. Yep. I'm going to get direction from them after they vote on the resolution. Okay. Yep. None. Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Olsen? Yes. 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 Motion is carried. Mr. Murphy, so, go ahead. Yep, so before we get to that, if, um, if I just get uh, agreement from the council or direction from the council uh, authorizing me to uh, uh, re respond to BNSF and tell them that uh, we do have a, uh, we in theory agree to the 156000 I believe $26 payment and to um, put together the paperwork for final council approval. Motion I'm approved. Okay. Are we not going to do a motion? It's, can't. Yeah, do it's recommendation, advisement to yep. him. Because you, you will officially adopt officially it, do it later. when we get the agreement together with him, but I want to make sure that, the, yeah. that the, that's agreement <clears throat> for the council. I'm fine with it. Unless, if you have an objection, I'd speak. If not, yes. I think you're fine, Mr. Murphy. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Move on to claims. Consider authorizing the city administrator, clerk, treasurer to issue Payment of Rickman bills and payroll. Oh, okay. by Johnson, second by Demers. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Demers. Yes. Better. Yes. Helms. Yes. Motion is carried. Mayor Gander. Um, as we know, Executive Order 2099 impacted local businesses and those costs that they're carrying have not yet been accounted for. And we do want to hear from those businesses. We had tentatively planned a meeting with them tomorrow night at 5.30. That falls in the middle or toward the end of the UND hockey game. So that meeting will be postponed by one week. Instead of happening tomorrow, it will be on December the 9th, Wednesday, 5.30, right here in this room. And so please keep your ear to the rail about that. And we will be coordinating to get hopefully a half dozen or so businesses in here to talk about how this executive order has impacted them and then make a strong case as best we can to the governor and the legislature to get together and properly fund this executive order. So one week from tomorrow, December the 9th, 5.30 right here. Thanks. Mr. Fetter. I don't have anything this week. Thank you. Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm just going to voice my opinion on that. I think this business of East Grand Forks is more important than a hockey game. I understand you did it, and it's, it's a done deal, but I want it made note that I believe it's more important to deal with this business thing than it is to worry about a hockey game. Thank you. My only response would be, I fully agree with you, and yet we do need participation. We need people to listen and be able to attend, and so to really maximize that impact is the only reason we moved it, because it is a priority. Anything else, Mr. Holmes? No, I'm good. Thank you. Mr. Riefel? Nothing. Mr. Johnson? Mr. Stordahl? Yes. How are we doing on 8th there? What's going on? I see there's still equipment on, on, and uh, berms. and. We're fine. The sewer project is completely done. It's just the rental company hasn't came and got their stuff yet. Okay. Thank you very much. Good job. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Demers? Nothing. Mr. Grassel? Nothing. Mr. Murphy. 
Uh, I just have one item. Uh, just a reminder that um, starting at the end of this week on Thursday, I will be out. Uh, I will be available probably the rest of this week via phone, but next week I will be um, unavailable. I will be in an area with no electricity to charge my phone, no running water, no indoor plumbing, and very limited cell service. So um, I will leave it in the capable hands of the staff. Uh, that's all I have. Grammar. I have nothing. Mr. Galstead. I have nothing unless there's any questions for me. Anything from the staff members? The probably ends. Okay. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Moved by Johnson. Second. Second by Grasso. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Means adjourned.